here we go. All right, can everybody hear me? If, uh, if you guys can hear me, please uh, type it in the chat. I haven't been uh, streaming for a while, so kind of have to set everything back up again. All right. Okay, Charlie, you can hear me, that's great. YouTube working, all right. Um, anybody on Twitch can chime in, that would be great, and we can get started. No background music today, the music app is kind of um, not working, but maybe it will soon, I don't know, we'll see. All right, nobody on Twitch uh, saying that the audio works. Hopefully we have some people on Twitch. All right, loud and clear on YouTube. That's great. Thank you all that are responding. We just need one person to respond. Oh, here we go, it's fine. Yep, we got Twitch as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone uh, and welcome uh, to uh, <laughs> this new series of, uh, of um, streams. And so last time we did eight episodes and uh, let me see here if I can uh, jump to where you can find those if you're interested. So if you go to uh, Z ZBrush Live, .com and you go to presenters, and I'm down here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, you can see there are um, eight episodes, or actually nine from the previous stream. One of them was when ZBrush 2019 came out, so we talked a little bit about 2019. So I did an extra one. And um, uh, Let's see, so if you are interested in watching this uh, robot that we made, uh, you can watch this uh, series. And then to this time around, we're going to do another series of eight. Uh, and this season or series, it's going to be uh, cars. So it's going to be a spinner. And um, it's going to, you know, if you saw the title image, this one, uh, this was a spinner that I made uh, when I was beta testing, I think ZBrush 2018, was it? Yeah, it was two versions ago. And um, so it was, um, it was something that I came up with using the project primitive capability. So uh, I was kind of testing that out and, um, and then I basically, um, you know, got this out of it. So um, we're going to be doing something similar to this. We're going to be making a new spinner. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what a spinner is, it's basically a flying car. And uh, it was dubbed spinner by um, Blade Runner 2000, or the first Blade Runner. And of course, there was a spinner in the next one, too. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Looks like some people are asking questions. What am I paying monthly for ZBrush 2019? Um, I've actually purchased ZBrush. I, I bought ZBrush a long time ago, and um, I think 2005, I want to say, uh, a long, long time ago. And uh, I've been using it since, so I, I don't subscribe. I actually, um, I bought it. If I was getting on now, I would probably subscribe, but... Uh, but currently, I uh, I just I just actually purchased the software and it's paid for itself many times over. So um, for me, I use it uh, almost every day, and uh, it definitely um, it definitely kind of uh, is one of those tools where I um, enjoy using it and also I'm very productive using it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is. Um, 
thank you uh, for the compliments. And yes, um, RJW, the up updates are free. So I just paid for it. I think it was like $500 at the time. I paid $500 for it and every update and upgrade since then. So I think I bought 2.5 and then 3.0 came out and then 4.0 came out and all the different versions of 4 and then 2018, 19, all of these versions that I purchased, um, I've basically been getting uh, the upgrades for free. So um, not only, you know, it's a kind of a good idea to buy it if you are going to use it all the time because uh, the price goes up. They don't raise it a lot, but it does go up over the years. And um, even though the price is kind of, I think it's about $800, $900 now, I think it's still cheaper than buying some of the other software packages out there uh, that uh, not only do you have to pay a lot of money for, and then you have to pay an exorbitant amount to uh, to subscribe to them as well. So uh, I think you know the yearly subscription is really nice, and hopefully um, you know it 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 helps you out with what you're trying to do. Um, I have it, but it seems uploading all the new ones. Uh, any, okay. Yeah, you don't need to. I mean, I basically, when I upgrade, I usually just use that version. I don't, I mean, I do have a couple of versions installed on my machine, older versions, but that's just because if some client has an older version file or whatever, I need to open it. Uh, that's why I have it. But in my everyday use, I just use 2019. And um, it shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't really eat up a lot of your hard drive space. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty compact. All right, so um, let's get on with the uh, kind of program at hand. So what we're going to do is a spinner, and what I've done here is I've loaded a car. I think this is uh, from a series of books that I got, like 500 models, and there's a bunch of cars in there, and this Audi is part of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take all of these, and I just want to show you kind of a quick way to get a, a car started. And uh, here I'm just going to basically um, look at, I really like the, the design of this car, so I was thinking I would use this design and I'm not going to use any of the parts in here I'm just going to use the basic shape of it so what I'm going to do here is just go in to uh, merge and click on merge visible and when I do that what it will do a ZBrush will do is it will create a subtool that basically has all of those parts uh, in it so as you can see here um, I, I guess I created a couple of them I'll delete one I don't need all of them and uh, so you can see here this one has 53 different parts and uh, what we did here is why is my image oh here we go all right and so what we did here is um, I think my camera's kind of freaking out a little bit so let me just take a quick look here um, there we go and focus is on set on auto so it should work. Okay, here we go. And um, sorry about that. And then, you know, so there's 53 different parts here. Uh, and as you can see here in, in my um, tool uh, listing here, it says it has 53 parts. But I don't want all those 53 parts. I might use some of them later. I don't know. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and look at this merged one. So here is a merged copy. And what I want to do is I just want to get this general shape. So what I'm going to do is go down here to Di Geometry and Dynamesh and just uh, dynamesh this thing. Um, just let's leave it at default, see what we get. And uh, it's going to close holes and it's going to give me the shape. So basically I've got this shape of the car. Um, not everything that I want is here. I, I still have kind of some areas here where there are some holes for the tires. And we're really uh, not going to have tires, but I'm going to leave them there. But what I want to do now is turn on Sculptress mode and uh, go in and use clay tubes and just try to fill up these holes. Uh, and let me turn symmetry on so I can do this on both sides, like so. And I'm just basically closing up those holes like that because I don't really need the gaps and I don't need the software to freak out for it. And so there's that and just kind of maybe do a little bit of this. And I don't really need these mirrors for now. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the mirrors, smooth it up a bit. And so this basically is the shape that I want right here, right? So I basically went from having that highly detailed car to this. I'll dynamesh it one more time. So I get this fixed up. I actually don't need um, Sculptress mode on anymore. And so I basically have the car kind of, you know, the general shape of the car 
and um, dynamesh mode. If I want to see what that looks like, here's the polyframe. It looks like it created some polygroups for me. I don't want them. So control W uh, or polygroup group all will basically give me one polygroup for everything. All right, and then the next thing I want to do is mirror this thing so it's perfectly symmetrical. So I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, mirror and weld, uh, and there it is. So for those of you that are not familiar and didn't watch my streams earlier, uh, I use my own UI uh, in ZBrush, and um, what I have done is I've just created a bunch of menus. So here are the menus. Uh, so I've got a menu for brushes, I've got a menu for stroke, I've got a menu for um, uh, uh, morphing, and um, another one for polishing. So I've got a bunch of menus that I basically created, and then I have them hotkeyed. So if I press Control A, for example, I get this menu, and it's one that I use all the time. So Control A is kind of my go-to menu. All right, um, let's see. Uh, all right. Okay, so here we have, we mirrored it, so we kind of have this kind of as one shape, and I'm just going to smooth out some of this bottom part, and I'm just going to start out with the shape. So I'm not going to have this car, my, the car, the spinner I'm making look like this, but it's going to have this general shape. And um, I might even go a step further here and zero mesh it just so I get clean topology. Not that it matters at this point, but I'll do it anyway, uh, just to kind of even get a, a kind of a more tighter uh, version of it. Okay, so here we go. I think I'm good to go. And now what I want to do is I want to start exploring some shapes. So I will go ahead and turn on off perspective mode here, and I'm going to turn off the floor as well because it becomes a little bit... Um, if you don't have the floor in perspective mode, it, it gets kind of... it looks a little strange. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, just go ahead and use that uh, project primitive. So if I press W, I get my gizmo and if I go into the gear here there's a bunch of different filters and I'm going to use project primitive and what that did is it just basically set uh, I think it has it from what I had way before, a long time ago so I'm going to reset this thing go here and say full reset so it just fully resets it and what project primitive does and I don't see too many artists using this and it's a pretty neat feature and what it does it basically adds this sphere and um, let me see if I can isolate this thing out so you can see it. Uh, let's see. One of the things about Project Primitive is that it's got all these cones, and sometimes I forget what they do. Um, so I need to remind myself real quick. One of them, basically, what it does is it uh, isolates the primitive out. And uh, I think maybe it's over here somewhere. Tessellate, no. Maximum displacement, opacity, auto grouping. Now, there's there's one of these that basically just isolates it. So, what's going on is I'm basically projecting a sphere, and as I press into the car, it's going to make a dent like so. And as soon as the midpoint passes the car, then it's going to add it to the car. So now it basically added it to the car itself. And this doesn't have to be a sphere. You can use the gizmo to kind of make it into this shape, and maybe make it into this shape. Right, and then um, you can start rotating it and trying to see if you can get a more interesting kind of oval shape um, here for the top of the car. Uh, which graphics card are you using? I'm using a, a GeForce 1080 Ti. Um, pretty kind of an older card. I want to get one of the new RTs. Uh, one of these days, but currently I'm just using uh, the GeForce card. However, uh, that said, ZBrush doesn't use a graphics card. So uh, you could be using this on any graphics card, and ZBrush doesn't use it, so it will function pretty well. Uh, that's why another thing I really like about ZBrush is that it does not really require uh, very um, powerful hardware. I mean, if it's there, it'll use it, but it doesn't need it. You can do a lot of what I'm doing, uh, if not all of what I'm doing, uh, with a very kind of, um, you know, not an expensive card, not an expensive computer. Um, I think you would even, uh, I've, I've seen people use it on one of the really inexpensive uh, portable um, Surface computers, I guess they're called Surface Go or something like that. I don't remember the name, but yeah, you don't really need uh, need uh, supercomputers to use it. Okay, so uh, somebody's asking, what does Sculptress mode do, and does it only work with Dynamesh? No. Okay, so let's talk about Sculptress mode. Sculptress mode is is uh, something that's really really cool, 
And what it does is that it allows you to, um, here, let's just um, switch over to a sphere or like one of these things uh, and make it into a sphere. So I, I let me just set it up as a primitive and let's go to with a sphere 3D like so. Okay, so here we have this sphere like so. And uh, the question was, what does Sculptress Mode do? Okay, so if you have a model like this and you're going to sculpt on it, so uh, let me kind of put it this in editing mode and I've got clay tubes here and if I start sculpting on it, see it's just gonna sculpt with whatever geometry is there. So you see what's going on here that I'm kind of adding, but it's not really adding any details, just adding to whatever that geometry is. So with Sculptress Mode on, right and it's just this button over here right so now I'm basically based on the size of the brush I'm adding detail and I can add as much detail as I want I can add fine detail so let me turn well I'll leave polyframe on so you can see so you can see here that I'm adding more geometry to this and I can also subtract geometry and I can smooth geometry and you can do really nifty effects like um, if you're adding geometry let's say like this you can keep going, keep going, and if I use another brush here, I'm going to use the snake hook brush. Uh, and so let me just go to S, snake hook. I can just grab and pull, and notice that it basically gives me as much geometry as I want, right? And I can do nifty things like even erase geometry. So here I'm just smoothing and creating kind of this water drop effect. Um, just kind of neat. So Sculptress Mode basically just allows you to sculpt. And if you're a traditional sculptor, uh, Sculptress Mode is basically a dream come true because it makes ZBrush very much like sculpting uh, normally. So, uh, and by the way, if you're interested to know more about Sculptress Mode, there is really good documentation on it. And there is a good tutorial on, um, on Z Classroom. So if you are somebody who's getting ZBrush for the first time, Z Classroom is really helpful. Let me just go there real quick. Uh, bring up a browser window here. And <clears throat> I don't usually mind a answering questions at all, uh, but um, you know what I recommend is a couple of things that you should know about. Is one of them is eClassroom, and the other one is um, Ask ZBrush. So in ZClassroom, for example, here you can just go ahead and go to Z, uh, learn ZBrush. Go down here, and if you're just getting started, you can click on this, and here's getting started with Sculptress. And uh, there are three good lessons that show you exactly what Sculptress Mode does. And these are pretty short, so 11 minutes, 6 minutes, and 7 minutes. So in about half an hour, you'll, you'll have a really good understanding of what it does. But, um, you know, please do ask your questions. I don't mind diverting away from what I'm doing to answer questions. Uh, people helped me when I was learning ZBrush, so I... Uh, can only uh, be happy enough to return that favor. All right, so jumping back to our car here, and uh, I'm going to undo this and start it over. It's the other thing that I really like about ZBrush is you can just kind of go back in, hi with, in history to where you want to. Uh, so we just want to go all the way back to this point right here, and again press W. Uh, see um, um, well I mean you know high RAM uh, you, you know if you have you're gonna have a lot of big models uh, you're gonna need more RAM uh, but if you have like 16 gigs or you know 16 gigs of RAM uh, I think you should be okay I think machines nowadays 16 gig is kind of the minimum all right let's go back to project primitive here there we go and what we want to do again is just kind of figure out a nice design here uh, in using what we've got but using maybe the project primitive to see and explore and see if it can give us new shapes all right so I'm gonna take this all the way to the back and move this forward and that's kind of an interesting shape right there, right? Maybe this back is, I don't like it the way it is, so I can do this to it. And um, maybe move it in from the sides also. 
like so. And uh, yeah, that, that's kind of an interesting shape, but let's see if I make it a bit smaller and move it back, if that's going to create a int more interesting shape. All right, so yeah, that looks okay. And so I'm basically just adding a little bit more to the car here. And uh, at any point in time, I can accept this. And uh, by, uh, so here, these cones, basically each one of them has a function. So this white one over here is accept. If I accept this, it basically adds this to geometry. The blue one here uh, basically um, allows me to continue by adding a new surface. And the one underneath it here is the blend mode. And so that can choose, I can choose how much of that shape I want to apply to my spinner. And uh, maybe, this much of it, maybe move it forward. Um, let's see if I kind of do this, if it's going to make it better. So I live in Los Angeles and we have some great museums here. And uh, I recently went to the Peterson Museum and they have a really neat exhibit. So um, I should tell you that I am using reference and I use PureRef for reference. So this is my reference. And um, as you can see here, I basically, uh, um, I'm looking at you know all the different spinner variations. So this is Sid Mead's spinner, famous uh, in Blade Runner, uh, one of the most beautifully designed cars, if not the most beautifully designed car ever. And so um, this was painted in gouache by him. Uh, so this is a top view and this is a side view. And these actually, they have a, a model of this car at the Peterson Museum. So I took this picture uh, a couple of days ago. So here's the exhibit and you can see that they have, uh, and I just took a picture from the front. I put, took a picture of this area over here. Uh, this model, unfortunately, is not a very good one. Uh, I don't know why they weren't able to get the actual thing, but um, they had a really good model of the new spinner. So I took this picture as well at the Peterson. So this one was designed by George Hull, I believe. And uh, this one was really nicely done. So you can see um, some really good details. And I took a bunch of reference photos of it. Uh, I took a, some pictures of the interior as well. So this is what it looks like. And this is actually the one I think they used in the movie. So uh, it's pretty nice. Um, and uh, they had another one too. They had this spinner there as well from the new movie. So I took a picture of it as well. Now, oddly enough, they had this other spinner from the first movie. Um, and I think this is a spinner, maybe not, maybe it's just a regular car, but they had a really good model of this one. So this one was really nicely done, uh, but uh, the main one they didn't really have a, a very good model of. Um, so in my reference, I basically um, put this together really quick today. I'll probably be adding more to it. So I basically have all the different types of inspirations, the old spinner, uh, the old spinner that was in the movie, uh, the new spinner, the other new spinner. And these are people that actually modeled spinners as well online. So I, uh, some of these are sketches and some of these are just parts, but I basically will get inspiration from all of these uh, moving forward. Here's a really beautiful one uh, that's, uh, that's made. Um, I think that's just a painting. So I'll be getting a lot of inspiration from that. And uh, here's another thing that was at the Peterson Museum that was really interesting is that they basically are doing the same process I'm doing where they took a Lamborghini Countach over here and they um, kind of did the same thing that I did, but went down to very low poly all the way down to here. And I think they had two of these cars. I think they had this one and this one over there uh, in the exhibit. Uh, and I took pictures of them. Maybe I can uh, put them up uh, next week. But anyway, yeah, having reference is really critical. Uh, it's a good idea to have reference when you're working. Uh, yeah, uh, I do go to SIGGRAPH every time it's in LA. I, uh, or sometimes if it's in San Diego, I go to, uh, and it's always uh, a good thing to go to. It's a lot smaller than it was, but uh, but yeah. All right, so here I'm just going to accept this. So if I, um, actually, let's do some more uh, things to it. 
So I'm going to actually uh, see here, you can tessellate it further if you want more geometry, but I usually keep this at the lowest possible uh, so I can keep my existing topology. Uh, and um, let's see here. Excuse me. Right, and um, so I can, this is the opacity slider, so I can kind of choose how much of this I want. So maybe about that much. And uh, this last one is grouping. I don't want to polygroup it. I want to leave it as is for now. And I'm trying to find the one that it can actually isolates the model out. Um, it's a primitive axis, primitive type. So yeah, there's different types too. So that's one type. I could have chosen this other type, which is kind of more of a square shape. So there's four of them. And then uh, there is a third one, which is um, kind of a tube uh, that goes around. Uh, it's not really working very well here. Uh, let's go ahead and choose. I think let's go ahead and stick with the first one we had, although I kind of like that one too. Okay, so let's just stick with this one and also let's go ahead and play with the opacity a little bit more just to get a little bit of a better A line here. All right, so I think I'm good with this. I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. And so now basically this is all uh, the geometry that's added. And I'm just going to go back to the Gizmo 3D. And here I can start sculpting. So I'm going to use the move brush and start to try and find uh, some interesting shapes here. So let me turn symmetry on and start pushing and pulling until I get some interesting shapes. So again, I started with that Audi, but now I'm basically, uh, I don't need Sculptress mode on. Now I'm basically just kind of playing, uh, trying to get some interesting shapes. I'll jump into Sculptress mode later. I'm not really worried about any topolog topological choices. Uh, a lot of the spinners don't have two wheels in the back. They usually have one wheel in the center. So I'll kind of maybe create a little bit of a, a thing for that. It looks like I've got shadows on. Let's see if I've got one of the, yeah, I have one of the newer BPR things on. So let me just real quick jump to the normal BPR setting here. And if you haven't used any of the new filters, they're really nice. So here I'm just going to go ahead and use this default. And go to filters and use the default as well. All right, that makes it normal. And then here I'm just going to use the clip curve function to just kind of cut out this bottom part. I kind of want to know where the tires are. I want to know their placement, but I, I'm not going to have the tires be uh, exactly there. All right, so let's go ahead and play around. Now, one of the things that a lot of the spinners have is they have this part pointing out like this. Um, so, um, you know, basically when they asked Sid me to design the spinner, they said design a flying car for us. So um, the first thing he thought of was, well, if this is going to have flying car technology, it's probably not going to have an engine right here. So he took the engine out and he made this shape. And then every single spinner after, um, after that uh, has this kind of same shape. So... Um, <clears throat> Even the, the one that I had done here, um, I kind of adhered to that. So I basically assumed that this would be kind of the uh, middle part of the car, and then there would be this part that kind of protrudes out. And I figure whatever technology is being used to make it float would probably be housed back here somewhere, right? So, um, and then usually these cars are two-seaters and we might do a few of them. I might do one that's a two-seater. I might do one that's more than a two-seater. So you can see here that very quickly I've kind of diverted away from the Audi and now I've got kind of a new shape that I'm working with. Uh, there's a little bit maybe remnants of the A-line from it or some of the parts from it, but uh, for the most part I'm kind of working on a new design. And again here I'm just basically exploring. This is today probably we're just going to spend today exploring um, different shapes and trying to create a bunch of them that we like. 
All right, so here, this one's kind of right here. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And um, earlier, I just basically did the same process I did with that, that Audi with three other cars. So I'm going to try working with those ones. So here, I've got three different sub-tools and basically it's the same process, but different types of different cars for each one. And um, so I'm going to try and explore these ones. And whatever I'm designing, I usually like to um, design as many options as I can so I don't lock myself into one design so I think this was uh, the Batmobile from the Batman game so I thought that would might be an interesting one to try and uh, work with so I'm going to go ahead and start working with this one see if this one gives me uh, a better some better options Anybody here a expert ZBrush user? Oh wow, there's a bunch of questions, hang on. Okay, um, Charlie, you're asking if I uh, took the model, took the detail out, uh, appended it in a, oh yeah, yes, basically exactly, that's exactly what I did. I basically just, you know, had somewhere to start out with and then I, uh, I kind of, you know, just uh, it gives me a place to start with. So sometimes I can start with a, a sphere too, but it's nice to start with an existing car. Um, uh, which ZBrush 2019 do you think? Well, they're all the same, right? It's just a matter of uh, there's only one uh, version of ZBrush, right? There's the uh, ZBrush Core, which is kind of nice if you're starting out, but. Um, I think I would, at this point, with the subscription being there, I would get the full thing. Um, am I a product designer? Uh, I do product design sometimes. I'm, I'm a concept designer. I'm a designer in general. So I just basically, you know, if somebody asks me what I do, I'm basically a designer. So uh, I do, uh, sometimes I design products. Sometimes I design uh, props for movies. Sometimes I design environments. Um, kind of like a one-man Porsche design. All right, so here I'm exploring some different options with this kind of look, seeing if this will work for me. Again, I'm kind of trying to go with that uh, Sid Mead inspired kind of front part. That seems to be kind of a must do if you're doing a spinner. I think there was a spinner challenge on Instagram too for a while, that was kind of fun. I think I found out about it too late. Um, which there's a few different kinds. I don't know. Let me let me take a look here. Um, on the website. All right. So Pixelogic.com. All right, and ZBrush. So there's ZBrush, there's ZBrush Core, and there's Sculptress. Sculptress you can get for free, right? So that's a free version. Uh, and it's not exactly ZBrush, but you can do some fun stuff with it. Um, and then this, that's basically what Sculptress mode is. It took a lot of the capabilities that Sculptress had and put it in ZBrush. Uh, so if I go to the store here, buy ZBrush, let's see. Oh, you're talking about these ones? So all of these are the same. So this one's just a month. So a month is 40 bucks. Uh, six month is 180 bucks. Uh, this is the full version. So if you buy this, you just basically have ZBrush forever. And volume uh, user perpetual license. So this is like if you uh, need five or more versions. Uh, like if you have a, an office that you have five uh, artists and you're going to need to buy five of them. And then this is for bigger companies or whatever. So what I would recommend here is uh, the best, uh, I think the best choice is to get the six month subscription uh, because, I mean, you can get a month if you're going to try it out. You can get the six months if you're, you want to use it. And then this one, if you, ZBrush is something you're going to use all the time. So all these other ones I would not really worry about unless you have a company or whatnot. So, uh, yeah. So if you're going to buy just, you know, you're going to buy one and you're going to use it all the time, uh, this is probably the best deal. Um, because if you subscribe for six months, that's about 180 bucks. So let's say it's about 200 bucks. 
So in about four years, you basically will have paid for it. So if you're going to use it for four years, you might as well buy this one. But if you're just going to use it for a while and not use it again, you can just subscribe, use it, and then not use it. I don't know. Um, I think the, the choices they give you are great. So it's up to you and what you can afford or what you want to use it for um, to decide. Um, yeah, you can. You, you, what do you mean by mechanisms? Let me, let me kind of ask you uh, about that. What do you mean by mechanisms? Do you mean like CAD, where you actually have functioning parts and whatnot? Or do you mean like internal parts of a car? Christian Mingus, Mignus, um, Migus, Christian, Christian, My, Christian Migus? <laughs> All right. There should be like a game show that, um, the goal of which is to pronounce names of people online. Uh, and if somebody gets it right, they win. All right. Um, so here I'm kind of looking at this thing. It's, I like some of it. I like the way it looks from uh, the side a little bit. But from the top, like this part's kind of bugging me. So I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, see. OK, so if two people are going to sit here, how is that going to work? Hard surface modeling, yeah, uh, you can do hard surface modeling. I, you know, a lot of the stuff I do is hard surface modeling. So if you look here on my website, sorry to bring this back, I keep kind of jumping off. But if you go back here to mechanical designs, oops, one too many. Uh, if you look at my mechs here, so this one right here was done 100% in ZBrush. This one was done about 80% in ZBrush. This one was done about maybe 30% in ZBrush. Most of it was done in Maya. But nowadays, I can do most of everything I did here in ZBrush. So I could probably do this exact same thing in ZBrush. Um, and so, um, yeah, uh, this was done in ZBrush. Um, See if I have any other mechs that were done in ZBrush. These one, this one was done in ZBrush. This is done in ZBrush. Although it looks cartoony, it's it's done in ZBrush. So yeah, you can make mechanical stuff all over at the place. And um, I mean, you can do organic stuff as well. That's what most people use it for. But you can definitely do mechanical things with it. Uh, let's see if I've got other vehicles. Um, this was done in ZBrush. This was done in ZBrush. So yeah. You can do mechanical things in ZBrush just fine. My website doesn't have a lot of work in it right now because I'm updating it. So you'll, there'll be a lot more stuff uh, soon. I just haven't had the chance to uh, update it lately. And uh, I've done a lot of work since then. So um, over the period of the eight weeks we're going to spend together, you'll probably see it change quite a bit. Oh, Spanish name, maybe that's why you sound like, oh, I see. Nice. Uh, yeah, you can uh, do gears. You can do all sorts of stuff. But you can't make the gears function. In CAD programs, you can like put gears together and then kind of simulate it. Uh, there is no simulation in ZBrush, per se. Uh, there's barely animation. It's mostly a design and modeling tool and digital sculpting tool. I'm kind of liking this design a little bit better, but I, I don't know. I kind of like the scoop here this way, maybe from the front. Um, hmm. Maybe take this out a bit more, like so. Too much. So see, this kind of modeling is kind of really um, hard to do with CAD programs. And uh, I uh, also teach. I teach at um, Art Center and at Otis. And uh, at Art Center, they have a really good car design program. And uh, sometimes I also teach companies. I did a tutorial for Hyundai a while back. And uh, it's really interesting how they design cars. They don't do it this way. They usually uh, have a very rigid kind of way of doing it. Uh, sometimes they use pieces of tape on walls. When I walk through the halls, I see the pieces of tape on there. And uh, nowadays, I think they're starting to use Gravity Sketch and VR, which is kind of nice. And I did bring something in from Gravity Sketch here because I thought it was a nice thing to have. And we'll use it soon. And maybe I'll go ahead and show it to you what it is now. Um, 
Let's see, do I have it here? Hopefully I brought it in. No. Yeah, we'll use it during the later on. But basically it's uh, it's a, um, no, these are just the drivers. But basically it's just a um, kind of a, a inter interior of the car. So I don't have to model it from scratch. There was a really beautiful one and I just thought I'd use that kind of as a starting point. Uh, wire par parameters, what do you mean by wire parameters uh, in Max? Uh, oh, Oblivion, yeah, well thank you, I'll take that. Uh, some really great designers worked on Oblivion uh, models. Uh, let's see, yeah, like parametric stuff you mean? Or do you mean uh, like cables and, and whatnot? Charlie. All right, this one's kind of looking promising, and I'll just jump up to down, jump to the next one here. And this one is a Aston Martin. Uh, you know, I started with an Aston Martin just because it's a cool car. Uh, gearing movements? No, you cannot have. It's again, it's not really an animation program, Charlie. Uh, if that's what you want, that's it. I mean, it does do animation, but it's not really an animation program per se. So you can't. Um, have gears be rotating and um, have a uh, kind of a timeline uh, with with stuff. You you can't do that uh, with not not in ZBrush. It's not really what it's meant to do. You might want to look at maybe um, Fusion 360. I think that does gear simulation and things like that. If that's what you want. All right, so here I'm kind of trying to get something going with the uh, Aston Martin shape. So here I'm going to try and move this back here, like so. And notice here that the topology is kind of fighting me a little bit, so I can always uh, zero mesh this again. Yeah, I think 3ds Max is is mostly used in game companies. Some animation companies use them. I think Blur uh, uses the uses it quite a bit. Um, I used to use Max a long time ago, and then uh, I've pretty much used every single single software package uh, for a while. I liked XSI a lot, and that went away, and then I switched to Maya. And I've been using Maya since then, but lately I've been looking at Blender. Blender is kind of promising, but uh, ZBrush is my go-to. I always kind of, if I can do it in ZBrush, I'll do it in ZBrush. It's just so much fun. So this is kind of giving me an interesting shape right here. Again, just really kind of basics. And what I'll do here is go ahead and zero mesh it one more time so I can get new topology to play with. Um, Now I'm not really doing anything with the settings here. I'm just kind of leaving it at uh, at half, just to kind of get the least amount of polygons. Maybe leave it at same and zero mesh it, because this is a good number to just kind of mess around. All right. Yeah, doing something like this in um, in Max will take a long time. It'll take you a long time to kind of get to a compelling design. Technically, there's a lot of really cool features, you know, but um, when you're just kind of doing rough design right now, which is what I call this is kind of sketching to me. It's like sketching. Oh, I destroyed that really cool line that that Vantage had, so I'm going to go back to it. All right, so uh, let's see here. Maybe I can do something with this front part. Make it a little bit fatter, make it just kind of flatten out the front. Um, yeah, um, Aesthetic Fantasy saying that you can use uh, Blender with ZBrush and Blender can do simulations and very good 
PBR and NPR rendering. Oh yeah, I agree. I totally agree. If you're new uh, and you're looking at Max, definitely take a look at Blender too. You can't beat the price. And if you want to spend a little bit of money, you can get box cutter for it. And that thing is just really amazing. Okay, again, I'm messing with that A line of that Vantage, which I don't want to do. And let's see here if I can figure out a good back for this. That looks good. So this is kind of very, kind of, you know, it's kind of boring looking. I'm going to go ahead and go to um, silhouette mode here and see if I can give it an interesting silhouette on the side. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a good point too. So um, initially I looked at Blender a long time ago and, uh, you know, it was free, but I thought, you know, wow, you know, it, it's free, so it must be bad. And it was okay but it didn't have a lot of capabilities. But now it's still free and it's really good. And there's a new version 2.8 that's coming out very soon here. I think the release candidate just dropped today. So pretty soon there's gonna be a new version and that new version, which I've been beta testing, a lot of my friends have, are really good. Uh, there's a couple of streamers that use Blender. Uh, you might wanna check them out. I think uh, M Michael Pavlovich does and I think Tony uh, does as well. Tony Leonard or Tony Coro, um, they have, they know Blender a lot more than I do and they can answer your Blender questions as well. I just started using it. I'm still trying to figure out the navigation. All right, I'm kind of liking this. It's kind of like a, you know, more like a luxury car kind of version of a spinner. Let's get back to material here. Kind of like, you know, this is kind of a nice uh, color to, or this material to do car design in, but you can't add lights to it. It's a matte cap. Uh, so I'll do kind of something similar uh, here. Gray Horizon will do that. Star Wars Land Speeder. I know, yeah, if you look at it from this way, like if you just turn the thing around, like it looks like a Star Wars car. <laughs> you know, this is the front, this is the back, totally does. Yeah, they had the Landspeeder at the Peterson too. They had the first one. I don't think there's been a single vehicle after that that's been of any interest in the Star Wars series. I mean, you know, Ralph McQuarrie designed the uh, X-Wings and, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that was designed in Star Wars, still the first series, the first three, still hold out. And all the newer stuff is just like more of the same, more of the same. Um, Darth Vader's helmet is like a million times better than Kylo Ren's helmet. Um, the speeder is better than all the speeders in the, the newer series. Like Ray's motorcycle, such an opportunity lost there to make a really cool looking motorcycle. I mean, yeah, she's not rich, but uh, she can probably put something better together with the parts. But they use the same designers over and over again. And uh, that's what you get. I mean, not to say that those designers are bad designers, but uh, think they can do some cooler things. All right. Like you look at the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter, I mean like what great designs those car vehicles are. All right, I think I'm gonna kind of, I think I'm beating a dead horse with this one. Eh, start out being better. I'm going to go back a few steps. I'm going to leave it at that and move on to the next one here. So here's another Aston Martin. Really beautiful A-line here. Let's see what we can do with this one.
What are some of your favorite vehicles in movies, guys? What are some movie vehicles that you think have kind of stood out for you? Oh, yeah. An AT&T. Those are beautiful as well. Again, for a series. <laughs> ATSTs for a series. All the amazing designs are coming from that point in time. And the sad thing is that none of those designers had these tools. They basically just used gouache and pencil and paper. I think we're spoiled with all this amazing technology. We should be designing better things nowadays than we do. Like I always wonder like what would Leonardo da Vinci have done with ZBrush? Like you take somebody like that or Michelangelo, you know. <laughs> Oblivion, yeah, yep, yep, yep. DeLorean, yeah, DeLorean's a beautiful car. Um, they had that, they had the DeLorean at the Peterson too. So if you're ever in LA, you can visit the Peterson and see, I don't know how long the show's gonna be up, but you can see, uh, you can see the DeLorean they used in uh, Back to the Future. It's a pretty, pretty neat car. The Oblivion uh, bubble ship is pretty neat too. That's Daniel Simon, he nailed it. So here I'm going with something completely different as well. Any cars nowadays you guys like on the road? We live in LA, so there are a lot of cars here. Almost too many. Getting this inside part is tricky because this is what happens. So what you need to do is just freeze half the car, um, turn symmetry off, freeze half the car or mask half the car and then you just do this to the part you want and then turn symmetry back on and then mirror and weld and then you get it on both sides. Oh yeah, the Vespa is pretty neat. Definitely. I always wanted one when I was a kid. My parents were like, no, no motorcycles. I actually bought a motorcycle. They made me take it back. All right, this is a really long spinner. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to try and make it shorter. So one of the cool things, again, is this feature here. Um, so let me kind of pull this part back. I think first that's what we need to do. I basically just pulled this out from the front of an existing long car. I want to try and keep that A-line as much as I can. Let's move this back all the way to here. Let's do your mesh it again. And then if I want to bring this over to the back, well, I guess I can always mask and press W and move it back. A little bit. There we go. Now, one of the things is that, you know, this kind of U-shaped design is kind of boring. So um, I tried with mine to kind of go out this way. And then I also put rear wheels, two rear wheels on mine. So. I'm going to try and see if that works here. Again, I'm playing with very few uh, polygons here. Maybe I'll go back quite a bit. 
So what I like about ZBrush is you can like jump all the way back to where you were. It's got the, all this entire history line, so you can go like, huh, when did was this okay? So here you can see kind of where the car started. Like here, I'm just going to go to the same number of polygons when I Dynamesh. So here, instead of pulling these out, maybe I should just pull this back. Here's ZBrush reminding me, hey, you're going to get rid of all those other steps. Are you sure you want to do that? My answer is yes. Yeah, Vespas are really cool. They're great beach motorcycles, like if you're at the beach. Unfortunately, motorcycles are really dangerous in LA. Too many people driving crazy. Zero-mesh this. And let's try to go for a sharper look. We haven't done that yet. And again, I want to take this whole thing and move it out. So here I'm just basically exploring ideas. I don't know which one of these is going to win. Maybe I'll choose. Maybe I'll let you guys choose. So here's kind of a whole different look from what we had before. And the kind of, you know, the original idea is to make a police car, but I could also make a... Uh, doesn't have to be a police car, it could be a luxury car, it could be a military spinner. At some point the military is going to come into play, I guess, in that world. Maybe not, I don't know. Blade Runner is always kind of a kind of a private investigator story, a PI story, kind of it's a, more like a film noir. But uh, you know, there could be flying cars. Oh yeah, the Ghost in the Shell, yep. I'm surprised nobody mentioned the Akira bike yet. That's well, like a, the best bicycle design ever. Um, the Akira bike is very, very cool looking, right? So. So basically, these things would probably have some sort of... Um, I'm, I'm surprised that we have not made flying cars. When I was a kid, that was the thing to do, is flying cars were going to be the future. Never happened. Um, they could happen, but... They should happen. If you'd find some sort of um, safe material to use. All right, it's kind of looking neat. This part's looking like fingers. So here I'll kind of try and show you how uh, I would use the um, project primitive again. So I'm going to use that same capability. So here we go, project primitive. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to take it over on this side like this and make it smaller. Whoa. Oh, I should reset it to its original shape first. Reset, full reset, and then this way, and out here, make it smaller. And now I can turn mirroring on. I'll put another one on the other side. And this will make a cool design this way. And so this is how I kind of came about my original spinners, I was kind of playing around with this. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I could do this, I could do this, right? So I can kind of get that really cool look. And if I may want to make it a little bit more oblong, oops, not rotate it, but make it a little bit more oblong, I can. And then I can completely cut it off this way. So I can kind of get that same look they have um, for most of the spinners. There we go. 
and let's move the whole thing back to here and then this part protrudes and creates another interesting shape um, like so all right and maybe make this a little bit bigger all right so I like that I'm gonna accept it so again to accept it it's this white cone right here so that accepts it and then I can actually do a whole other one in the back Right, so I still have that same shape and I can still use that exact same shape in the back, maybe do this to it. And now I've kind of got that same look in the back and maybe in the back I can make it a little bit longer. It wants to rotate. Well, maybe I should try rotating it. Maybe I should accept the happy accident. Let's see if that looks better. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Find that top part, rotate it maybe this way too. Nope, keep it this way. And let's go ahead and try and play around with some of the settings here. Nope, let's leave the tessellation where it was. Yeah, that's fine. I want to make this one a little bit wider like that. There we go. All right, so now we're getting a completely different look than what we had before. I'll go ahead and accept this as well. And let's zero mesh this, get some clean geometry to work with. Let's see. Um, Um, is it hollow geometry or is it solid? You mean the car itself? Is the car itself hollow? Is that what you're, what you're asking, uh, Christian? Migus? Migus? Can you change the mat cap? Yeah, sure. Um, let me change it to basic material. I'll, I'll go to basic material too so I get a little bit of the shine here. Um, is this hollow? Absolutely is. So here if I um, do this, right? the inside part, let me turn double on, it's totally hollow. So we're just working with surface. I have to go to select mode here and do this just to get the whole thing back. All right. So now I'm back to pushing and pulling. So I have that shape, but now I can do more with it. So maybe I can have it kind of do this. And maybe I don't want it to be so harsh. So I can soften it up over here like so. Uh, so see what I did there is I didn't turn symmetry on, which is not a good idea since cars are symmetric for the most part. But we'll do some asymmetric stuff later on, but for now, so maybe the front part's kind of like this, aerodynamic, and then this weird thing sticking out, we might want to do some things with it too uh, a little bit later on. Let's go back to clip. Oh, could I change the matcap to a different one? Well, this is all one piece, uh, right? So it's still part of the same shape. Um, I don't know. I actually, I don't even know if. Uh, yeah, no. I think if you if I change the matcap here, it's basically going to change it to whatever matcap um, I have. It's not going to. Uh, it's it's not you know that inside piece is not going to be a different matcap. You can paint it with a different matcap if you want to. But at this point, I don't really want to be painting or doing any of that kind of stuff. I'm just, um, at this point, I'm just exploring shapes. I'm just coming coming out with some ideas for uh, what I want the thing to look like. Um, well, it'll change it per subtool. Uh, so here, for example, I've got, let me bring up another car here and move it over. 
right? So I've got these two cars, and if I want to make the matcap different, right, I can go ahead and choose a different matcap for this car. Uh, this one is changing as well because it doesn't have poly paint on it, but if I wanted to apply that matcap, so let's say I'm going to take this car right here, uh, let me pick something more interesting. Let's say I've got this red mat cap, right? And what I want to do here is I want to make this one, uh, this car, permanently that color. So um, I can go into, um, well, first thing I want to do here is I want to make sure that I choose, um, let me pick the right thing here, go to color. Right, so there is a color pull down. I guess I don't have it here, right? And under color, there is something called fill object, right? And it will fill the object with that mat cap. So if I click that now, it will fill that object with that mat cap, right? And once that object has been filled with that mat cap, then it basically has this little brush icon that shows me that. So here, if I go to a different material, right? If I have this on, that's weird. Um, oh, that's why I'm in move mode. Okay, so here, let me go to this mode. So see here where it says RGB M and MRGB. So RGB is the color. So here I'm changing the color of my um, car. So let me actually put this back where it was. Right, so, and I'll just move it up. Okay, so I've got these two cars, and so what I want, what I want to do here is if I want to change the color of this car, I can just move this over, and it's, it's going to change all of them. Um, I think this one, one of them has masks, a mask on, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so I've got these two cars, and if I'm changing the color here to green, they're both changing to green, right? But if I want to fill the car that I'm on, so this car that I'm on right here, if I want to make this car green, this color green, then I need to make sure that I've got RGB on. So let me be in edit mode or draw mode, RGB on. And if I say fill object, now it's going to fill it with that color. So now if I change the color to something else, like let's say red, right? So now the color is going to change for this one, but this one has a color already. But if I had M here, that just changes the material. And if I have MRGB, then that changes the material and the color. So here, if I want to change, take this car uh, right here, the green one, and I want to decide that, no, I want it to be orange, right? And I want it to be a different material. I want it to be this material right here. There's a metallic one, so it's going to be metallic material and it's going to be orange. So this is the color I want for it right here. So now I just click on MRGB and when I click on fill object, it's going to get the color and the material. So now if I change materials, if I go to this car and I change materials to, let's say this, right? Notice this change stays the same. And if I change my color to, let's say a blue, bluish color, right? then it basically goes to, it, this changes all over the place because this does not really have a material applied to it, but this one does, right? So this car over here is going to retain that material and it's going to retain that uh, mat cap. And if I click on this brush over here, then the material goes away. I mean, the color goes away, but it retain, does retain the mat cap, okay? Um, so yeah. If you don't have the little brush icon on here, then it is globally going to change. So whatever you change your color to, it's going to change to that color. Um, but if you do have this on, then it's going to uh, retain the color uh, that it was painted with. All right, so let's see these cars. So um, what I usually like to do is just put them all in the center. So there's one, here's this guy. Let's put him in the center as well. And here's this one. Let's put it in the center. So all these three of these cars are in the center. And I use this expose button to kind of bring them out. And um, let me also make sure that these are all centered on the car. All right, let me just do this. Bring them back together again, turn on um, transparency, just want to make sure they are aligned kind of in the center and are about the same size. So there's that one, there's this one, which is totally 
not aligned. So let me go ahead and put this um, symmetry off, center, and let's move that over here and make this bigger as the other cars. So I've got three different ones here, and then I'll go ahead and go over to that Audi uh, that I had. I think this was not the Audi, I think this was something else. So I'm going to choose that one to copy it. and paste it in with the other ones. All right, so let's see which one of these actually, this one has the right orientation, so the other three don't. So I'm gonna choose these other three cars. So I'm gonna hide this one that I just added and pick these ones and make them the right orientation. Where is the gizmo for this one? Way out here. All right. All right. So here we got all four of them kind of in the same area, but the size is different. So let's make sure that our size is the same. And uh, I brought these cars in separately, so each one kind of had its own scale. Let's make sure the orientation is right. This one. Now what I'm going to do next is going to be pretty interesting too uh, as far as design is concerned and that's kind of using designs together. Um, now this one's really small. Let's make it big as well. This one has that horrible color so let's go ahead and fill it with um, let's make sure MRGB is on and fill it just with the generic color and material. All right, so now I've got these four cars, and if I want to look at them all next to each other, I could just go ahead and press this. And when I'm designing for a client, I usually um, design a bunch of them like this, and uh, sometimes if they are uh, designers, if they are an art director, they can get a sign off, and sometimes if they're not, then I basically will look at it and decide myself which one is the better one to go with. So I have four different designs here, and they each have their pluses and minuses. So what I'm going to do here is just merge them together. Um, just go to the top here and merge them all down to the same uh, car. I'll separate them out later on. And uh, man, I did not want to do that. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I'll do this. I wanted to merge them, but I didn't want them to be kind of away from each other like this, but um, I will have to do that whole thing all over again, which is not a big deal. All right, I just want them to be kind of this unified size. And now I'm gonna split them again. So split the parts, we'll split them up again, and then individually I can move them back to the center. Move to this one. Go to this one. and move it to the center. And last but not least, all right, so this is kind of what I wanted right here. And now what I will do is just start looking at these kind of together. So we take this floor off and see if they, um, to create a kind of a newer shape from what I had. So here I've got this one Right, let's hide a couple of them. And I've got this one. And I kind of look at them together and see if it kind of comes up with an interesting look. So this back thing is adding more to it. 
but it's kind of not really making that big of a difference. So I'll hide one, turn the other one off, and this one. So here, this one actually adds a little bit more to it, right? So I kind of like the two together uh, in a way. They create a more interesting shape. And let's see, I'm going to turn transparency on to see if I'm losing anything that I really liked in that other shape. Mm, no, so I guess I'll, I'll, I can merge them together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to duplicate this one and lift it up. And here I'm going to start a folder, uh, which is new in 2019. That is just basically going to be a parts folder. So I'm going to go ahead and say new folder, parts, and so if I have things I don't want to kind of look at, I can just kind of put them in this folder and forget about them. So here I've got this one right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top one and this one down here and merge them together. So I'm going to turn transparency off. I've got these two like that. And maybe I will add a color to one of them just a little bit to kind of tell me that that one was the other one. So here I'm going to fill the object with that and then move over to a different color. So that way I know which one was which. Maybe to a grayish color like that. Maybe a little bit lighter. There we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take these two and merge them together. So I'm going to merge down. So now they're together. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, so they're still two separate cars though, right? But what I want them to do is be one. So here I'm just going to go ahead and um, zero mesh them. But I'm going to do a few things here with Z. I'm going to turn on adaptive. Uh, and curve strength up to here. I'm sorry, not zero mesh them, did dyna mesh them. I'm like, what is going on here? So I'm going to turn sub projection all the way up, blur down, project the old ones, and just dyna mesh. And so what that's going to do is it's going to create, um, let's see here, it should have created just one car. Yeah, so it fuses them together. So now this is all one car. And now what I'm going to do, it's interesting what it did with the colors here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zero mesh it again. So here we'll go ahead and keep uh, it uh, not the same, but uh, let's just turn on adaptive and zero mesh it, see what we get. So now we're just going to get one car uh, that's composed of these two. Right, and it's going to take a little bit of time. There's a lot of geometry here, but it's not going to take that long. All right, so I think I have this one on. That's why the other thing is showing up. All right, so a uh, good thing is ZBrush saves by itself. So I hadn't saved for a while, uh, and I'm glad it saved it. Otherwise, I would have lost all this work. So we'll wait a few minutes for it to be done, and it's done. So now I basically have this, and it's all one piece. And this zero mesher is pretty dense, so I'm going to go ahead and zero mesh it down a bit. So let's go ahead and go to zero mesher, and let's go to half size, and let's make sure it detects the edges, and click on zero mesh. And that's going to give me a lot less polys, and this process will get slower at, or faster as I have less polygons. And the reason why I'm doing this again is just to get less polygons so that when I'm pushing and pulling, I don't have a lot of detail. And then I'll add the detail as I need to later on. All right, one more time maybe. And notice that every single time it's taking um, less and less time to do the zero mesh. So this is kind of good. So we'll just go ahead and continue on with this. So now again with the move tool I can start moving things around and seeing how I like this progression. Um, I kind of no, don't like this way of it scooping out this way. I kind of like those circles, so I'm going to do that one more time. I'm 
going to go into W here, go into Project Primitive, I'm going to move this over to the side, make it a lot smaller, move it forward, uh, maybe a bit bigger and down like so. All right, I like what I'm seeing. Maybe flatten this part in a bit, rotate it out. Yep, that's, that's working for me. And what I wanna do is I wanna try flattening out this part a little bit like so. All right, let me see if I can get this to be tessellated any less, or if this is what I have to do. So tessellation, I think, was this one. Yep, let's bring that down to here. That's fine. And let's accept this. All right, and the back is fine. But let's go ahead and see if I can let me reset the shape though. Move it to the back, turn X symmetry on, make it smaller and push it in. There we go. So starting to look a lot like the one I had already, and you can see that that's kind of what the technique was that I used uh, with it, with the spinner that I had before. So you can kind of see how that same thing is happening over here. And maybe rotate this this way. And I, th I kind of like the way that this was rotated, so I'm gonna try and give that another go here. All right. Hello, editor. Okay, so, um, yep, I think I like that. So let me go ahead and accept it. All right, uh, maybe not accept it yet. Let's see if I can reduce the tessellation on this guy too um, and see. Mm, I think I'm going to need the tessellation. All right, so I'm going to accept it as is. And notice what happened was it kind of gave it a different polygroup there for a while if I had chosen different polygroups, so I'm going to keep this. Let's see, remesh it again. And uh, zero mesher with detect edges is really nice because it gives you that hard surface look. And uh, let's start kind of moving things around here. So turn symmetry on and uh, I kind of don't like this break here. I don't like it in the new design uh, of the spinner either. I kind of like the way that uh, Sid Mead did it where there was a different um, shape kind of coming in this way. And then this would this was kind of a separate piece, right? So I'm kind of going to do the same effect. like so. And here I'm basically just trying to define some kind of harder lines. And again, uh, keeping it really loose and really kind of simple. Uh, all that trouble we went to with this and I'm kind of maybe not use it. All right, there's that. And I have to do something with this part. I'm really not happy with that front. I mean, it looks okay from the top, but uh, let me try this. I'm trying to come up with a newer design, something that hasn't been done before, and it's kind of hard to do. You kind of are restricted by certain things. So maybe for next time, I'll think up some new technologies that could force me to uh, have this have a different shape. Oh, that is horrible. Looks like Mickey Mouse ears. All right. So if you find yourself kind of, you know, 
beating something back and forth, it's a good time to kind of move on to the next two designs. So let's pick these two, see if these two do anything together. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide this. And we have this one and this one. If we turn both of these on, it kind of creates an interesting thing. What if I bring this back? So I'm just basically hiding and showing all the different ones that I have just to see if two can create a better shape. That's kind of neat, the way this is kind of coming in, but that's kind of going out. Uh, yeah, these two might create something interesting. I'm still kind of bugged because I'm still staying with a very similar design to what's out there and I want to do something a little bit newer. Man, this new one we did is really bugging me. Okay, so this one right here, these two. Uh, and sometimes, you know, resizing it kind of adds different capabilities, moving it around. So here I'm just basically exploring a newer shape. This kind of is neat. Uh, the front part's pointing that way and these sticking out kind of from the side. You always have to kind of also consider where the people are going to be getting in, so you always have to look for a door. So I'm kind of liking this look. It's not something I've seen before. And which one? It's these two. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to duplicate this and we'll go ahead and move the copies into this folder we created and we're just going to go ahead and merge these two together and sometimes it's a good idea to keep them separate and just uh, kind of move things around with them being separate so here I'm um, to the move brush So now I'm kind of moving them together and I can also move them separately. And of course I don't have mirroring on, so it's a good idea to turn that on. Yep, there, right there. Okay, so I'm moving them together now, but they're two separate pieces. And what's nice about this is I can actually isolate one. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking this look. I don't think this has been done before. Got a little bit of that Aston Martin shape kind of here, and then this is kind of going down. And then I have to f kind of find out where the bulk of the bulk part is. Nope, going down was the wrong thing to do. But let's see if I can lift this back part up. Nope, that was not good either. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to make this part bigger. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how you can um, separate them out. So here I did this, and if I do Control Shift A, it'll just select this part. And what I want to do is um, I'll mask this part and then bring the other one back. So now the other car is masked underneath, but this car is not. And what I want to do is I want to make this car a little bit, oops, not turn it, but make it bigger this way and make it bigger this way. So now I kind of have an interesting look from the front. Interesting look from the bottom. And then I can flip the mask over so and then I can use do the same thing with the other part. So maybe move this forward a bit, move this down like so. So you can see here I'm actually playing around with the both of the shapes but I'm playing with them together and I'm not having to switch between subtools. I can just click a button and go between one and the other to get a more compelling look. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. This is working for me 100%. This might be the one we're going to go with.
Um, So this is kind of something that I have not seen before. And right now it looks like two pieces. But um, if I go ahead and merge them like I did before, so what I'm going to do here is just uh, go and Dynamesh them. So here they are, Dynamesh. And I'm going to choose a resolution of, let's say, 512. And... Um, Sub projection all the way up, no blur, project on Dynamesh. Not bad. And let's just use the same um, poly group here. Cool. So that created some interesting kind of divisions here. Of course, this part here I don't really like. So I'm going to go ahead and bulge it out, but not so much. And um, let's go ahead and switch over to Daemon Standard here and define where that canopy is going to be. an interesting scoop over here that I can see what I'm going to be able to do with that. So I'm just kind of trying to envision where the canopy is for the car, where the side windows would be, see if that works. And again, just really rough. Uh, I don't know if you can bend the glass that much. So maybe it goes like this. And uh, yeah, so now I'm kind of getting a rough idea of what the parts of the car would look like. So there is really no rear part. This would be where that like thing that drone pops up from. And there are the police lights and whatnot. But uh, yeah, this is kind of looking interesting so far. I've got some cool kind of, I like the scoop over here. I like this back part and the way that that's breaking. Uh, I might need to do something over here with this. Somebody was mentioning that I'm moving uh, really fast with the brushes. So basically what I have is, uh, if I had control A, these are the brushes I use all the time, right? So some people have these on the bottom and I don't want to keep going down. So whenever I bring up my menu, here are my brushes. And to the brushes, Z Modeler and the Move Brush, I have them uh, mapped to one and two. So I can very easily switch between the two. So if I press two, I'm using the Move Brush. And I haven't used Z Modeler yet. I will very soon. Uh, I might do a prototype using Z Modeler. Let's see, what time is it? Yeah, we're doing OK on time. And I'm going to see if I can kind of continue this beautiful curve over here. And I don't know if I like how long this is in the front, so I'm going to shorten it up a bit. Uh, maybe about there. Uh, I'm kind of having to completely re smooth some of this geometry over here, but I don't really care about it because I'm gonna, I can read Dynamesh it. And that'll kind of fix that part for me. Right. I think my Dynamesh level is way too high. I'm gonna to go to 256. Again, all I just want is this shape. 
Chart general form. This is the hardest thing to get to. So the sooner you get to that, then the rest of your work becomes easy. Yeah, this kind of top part protruding out is totally making this shape work for me. I'm just going to flatten out this bit of crud over here. Like so. All right, so I think um, I think this is definitely one of the shapes that I would want to go with. And let's see how much time we have. We have about 20 minutes or so left. So what I'm going to do next is um, start from scratch. So I've been starting with existing car designs so far, but um, let's go ahead and start from scratch. So here, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and append one of these guys, Polymesh 3D and make it into a cube. Like so. And I'm going to leave this uh, other car here, put on transparency so it's there, but uh, it's not really bugging me. And I'll turn ghost mode on, why not? And so now I'm going to use Z uh, zero measure. I'm going to use zero measure and kind of make a completely new car. Uh, let me do something here real quick and do a mirror and weld. So I've got two sides, uh, maybe not just yet. All right, and let's start kind of bulking out the shape of the car. So I'm going to go based on what we have here a little bit, like so, and just kind of get to the front part. And I like using um, zero measure with um, polyframe on and um, Maybe push this down as well, like so. All right, so we're just basically starting with a rectangular shape, like so. And then we'll start adding more to it. So first thing I want to do here is add a line in the middle. So insert multiple loops and resolution of one. So that adds it right in the middle. And then I'll start kind of, let's turn symmetry on. I'll start doing this, maybe that. And this to me is like working in something like, um, Minecraft. Where I'm just kind of building up the car. And at any point in time, I can press D to go into dynamic subdiv mode and I get kind of more of a curved look. I can actually work in this mode too. So now I'm kind of trying to get a whole new shape completely from scratch. Let's see, all uh, right. So here you can see I'm kind of going about the same process in a completely different way, getting completely different results. And um, I'm trying to see if I can kind of maybe borrow from the shape that I had before. Here's ZBrush uh, reminding me to save again, which is always a good thing. not only reminding me, but doing it for me. Thank you, ZBrush. All right, let's try doing one more of these. And I kind of like this kind of forward shaping, um, forward facing shape. So I'm trying and emulate that if I can, as you know, see if that works. And what's nice is even with this low poly count, I can still kind of uh, use a lot of the sculpting tools. So at any point in time here, I can just switch to my move tool and start getting shapes to kind of be more along the lines of what I want. So another thing, interesting thing that happened here is that I've got this kind of other look going on here, which is like that. And maybe I don't need that rear stuff. 
Let's go back to Z modeler. Let's see what it would look like if I did this. Oh, it's kind of interesting, right? Yeah, and to do something like this in Max or Maya or whatever would take forever, and you will not get the same results. You just won't. Um, it'll take a lot longer, and uh, just the ability to be able to do this. I don't know if I like all that stuff I added. Let's see if I can add a, more of a scoop to it. And now I'm actually getting tired of that other one, so I'm going to hide it, and I'm just going to go with what I have here. Um, And I keep adding edge loops, so I'm going to turn this to do nothing. I might as well turn vertices to do nothing, too. So all I'm doing is either adding shapes, or let me go to the move brush. See if I can get something a little bit more compelling here. And uh, one of the things I might do is I might kind of maybe on um, my Instagram or somewhere put in a vote to see if uh, you guys want to vote on uh, which one of these I should go forward with. It's kind of a really irregular looking spinner, um, but again, just a little bit of a, you know, using the shift key, I can get a completely different shape. And here's kind of a really interesting new shape that I never really would have thought of. Um, that kind of came out of nowhere just by using Zmodeler. And I've been at this for like, what, 10 minutes? Not even five minutes, and I'm getting a good kind of primary shape. So that's kind of a, a shape I could go with right here. Had a big canopy. And the great thing about this is if I go back, I mean, this is like, look at this, it's like almost no geometry. And the other thing also is I can go with a more of a kind of a, you know, angular look like this, and that gives me some new possibilities, and I can subdivide this and get some uh, shapes out of it. Or uh, I can go with the, uh, this version, the dynamic subdivision version. Or I can also go uh, at, uh, at it in a different way, too. So maybe I want something in between. And to do that, let's go here to Geometry tab and Dynamic Subdiv. And I'll go ahead and turn QGrid on and uh, start playing with the coverage. So now I'm getting something in between what I have in between smooth and in between faceted. So I'm getting a whole other type of design this way. And let me just kind of stay with this for a while, see if I get something compelling this way. So again, from a design perspective, I can get pretty far pretty quickly. And I didn't have to put a piece of tape on any wall or do any of that. So here I'm getting something a little bit more modern and um, Again, just the power of working with very few polygons here. And let's see if I can get a more interesting A-line. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Almost no polygons. I mean, this is like, what, uh, 164 polys. Uh, is that a chicken? Christopher would like a ZBrush t-shirt. Well, you can get one. They sell them. By the way, I don't know if you guys know the ZBrush Summit is coming up. And if you're in LA uh, or you're traveling to LA, definitely go there. You can buy t-shirts, cups, all sorts of stuff. And uh, you will also learn amazing things from amazing artists. 
And if you can't go, you can log in online and watch as well. All right, so um, yeah, it has kind of a look of a rubber chicken uh, cool three. change the color it won't look like a chicken anymore maybe I don't know let's go with uh, with that and again uh, the details and secondary tertiary forms I add are going to add a lot more to these cars but basically what you're going to see when you look at them from far away is something very small so they have to work the silhouette has to work and that's why I spend a lot of time making sure that that is something that is going to work before I start adding details Uh, Tron, ready next player, uh, ready next player. You mean ready player one? Or is there a movie called ready next player that I don't know about? That's probably really good. All right, so here I'm kind of needing a little bit more geometry. I, I've been um, I've been uh, doing a lot of um, sculpting here, but I think I need to insert an edge loop here just to get a little bit more. Uh, lines and maybe one more here. So again I add very sparingly at this point just to make sure that uh, I don't have too many points to push and pull because I can be manipulating this, these designs very very quickly. Uh, it's late on the East Coast. Hey thanks thank you so much for tuning in uh, and uh, staying up for this. I really appreciate it. And by the way, if you guys want to watch this again, if I'm moving too fast, uh, these will be saved and will be on the YouTube channel, so um, or the Twitch channel as well, so you can watch it after the fact, which I think is pretty cool too. You can't ask questions though; you have to be on live for that. All right, so we're kind of coming to a, a good point here where we can leave this. We have quite a few to work from, and next week we'll choose one of them and go to the next stage. So what I want to leave you with is to let you know that I do have a um, Instagram channel. And let me uh, bring that up so you can go ahead and subscribe. Um, so my website is kermaco.com, so K-E-R-M-A-C-O.com, and you can always go there um, to see new stuff. And as I mentioned, this is going to change quite a bit over the next few uh, few uh, weeks and months, so keep tuning in. But over here, I've got all of my um, social media, and uh, Instagram is one of them, and I highly recommend you follow my Instagram. Uh, I post a lot of great stuff here, so here's me at the museum with the spinner, right? So um, here's me talking about the fact that I'm going to be doing the ZBrush Live uh, and it's going to be on this day. So you can stay up to date. This is the robot we built last time. So this robot is the one we worked on uh, in the last eight uh, episodes or nine episodes before this this uh, series or the season. So um, yeah, it's a good thing. I do sketches as well. Here's some hard surface stuff I worked on. So there's a lot of work here you can look at. Um, there's some photography. Uh, here's kind of a, a thing I did with a, a very rough spinner model. And then I used uh, ZBrush's new features to kind of create a story. So here's one plate of that story. 
and then here's another one and we'll do that with the spinner too so we'll make a little city like this and and create a a scene and render it in a cartoony kind of way uh, so here i did just did three plates and maybe i'll continue it i've got a story in my mind that uh, might work for it but yeah, uh, definitely follow me on Instagram, and uh, that's kind of where I post most of my newer stuff, and uh, check my website every now and again. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll just uh, open it up for some last-minute questions that you might have, and if you don't, then I bid you a good night. And uh, by the way, I will uh, be coming back, not next Friday, but the Friday after. So we do every other Friday. So uh, not next week, but the week after next, I will be on uh, right, I think before SIGGRAPH starts, right? And then um, we'll do another two episodes in August and so on and so forth. All right, so um, I guess I'm just going to end it here unless there are some last questions to be asked. Looks like none. So uh, everybody, thanks for watching. And again, uh, go to ZBrush Live to see a lot of great artists showing a lot of cool uh, stuff. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.